So uh, pig, another pig's challenge nutritional question. I'll keep this kind of open because a lot of the stuff that um, applies to pig's challenge also applies to other long endurance based events as well. All right. So, um, well, this is a, oh, this sounds like a bit of a tough one. Um, for this endurance event, would you consume any short chain sugars uh, slash gels in the beginning of the event or leave them towards the end? <laughs> Generally, I prefer to run, personally, I prefer to run uh, uh, low GI carbohydrates. So, you know, complex carbohydrates earlier on in the ride and then migrate towards high GI carbohydrates. That, un that is unless I'm racing. I'm racing, you know, like I can't eat a muesli bar when I'm racing because, well, I just can't. You know, it's like it involves okay. chewing and, you know, normally I'm racing. So, you know, my head's down and I'm just committed to whatever's going on in front of me. So, so generally for racing, I'm, I'm on gels, but, um, but for peaks, you know, you've got plenty of time to, you know, pull a muesli bar out of your pocket and, you know, pull the, pull the wrapping off of it and start chewing away at it. I mean, there's a whole descent of Hotham where you could probably eat three of them and, you know, <clears throat> and uh, it'll be fine. So, so generally that's what I recommend. But that being said, uh, it really depends on your burn rate. Uh, for recreational rides, it's, well, there's a couple of protocols and I, I go over this quite often, but there's two protocols that are out there. You'll see the one promoted by nutritional companies, which is one gram of carbohydrate to one gram of kilogram, to one kilogram of body weight per hour. So if you weigh 70 kilograms, that's 70 grams of carbohydrate per hour. That's a lot of carbs to eat in an hour. That's about two gels um, or well, almost three gels or three muesli bars or like five bananas or you know, like it's a lot of it's a lot of carbs. Now, if you're riding at really high intensities, you would generally burn that sort of um, carb. But for recreational riding and training and stuff, it's somewhere between 30 to 60 grams for most athletes. I had one of my clients tell me that they were doing 100 uh, grams of carbs per hour it seems pretty excessive uh, i'm sure he was a big guy but that seems like a lot of carbs but generally you want to get your nutrition and stuff bolted in and locked in um, before your event and then put together a nutritional plan to get an idea of what you're going to be eating throughout the event um, and take into account the feed station so we actually have a nutritional chart for peaks challenge so uh, that i created for bicycle network like um a few years ago if you're interested just send me an email to support at cyclinginform.com i'll send it through to you please don't do that the day before the event um yeah. do send it to me yeah. earlier so yeah. i can get back to you um yeah. yep sorry no that's quite good david i'm um, really thankful because yeah last year when i did it yeah they said uh, there was one i'm not going to mention the name guy saying you know take gels you yeah. know and you know here's on promoting this drink a lot of maltodextrin yeah the short chain you know things but i just found Halfway through, I just bonked out, you know, that yeah. big sugar hit. Yeah. Big so sugar. now I'm working on, you know, the winner's bars, you know, one or two yeah. per hour. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to try that strategy. So just asking your opinion, just, yeah. you know, what yeah. works Look, for you. Yeah. Look, the, the thing about Pig's challenge around nutrition is that you want to have, um, because it's such a long event, for those people that don't know, the cutoff time is 13 hours. And it's basically 235 kilometers and you know and you know like as many and as many vertical meters as you can fit into an event we're well, not quite but it's um it's about 4,800 vertical meters so there's a lot of climbing in it um but generally you want to you want to make sure that you're comfortable with your nutrition you know if they've got um uh Godot Evans bars or whatever they've got at the event and they're going to be dishing them out then I would recommend that you trial those as well so that you kind of use them look I eat a lot of Carmen's bars they're a bar that's made by an Australian company here you can buy a box of them for like six or seven dollars and they last me a week <clears throat> and when I'm out on longer rides that's generally what I eat when I'm training um, but you want to have a low GI carbohydrate before you start for any rides longer than two hours. You want to have a low GI, and that, including peaks, you want to have a low GI carbohydrate before you start your ride. Um, and um, and that could be porridge or muesli or brown bread or something like that. Um, you know, I had one client that used to have brown bread and canned spaghetti cold on his toast. It was like, I don't know how he ate that. But anyway, that's what he, that's what he ate and that's, kind of a little bit of low GI and high GI. So, um, but then once you get into your ride, you just want to eat, you know, a couple of muesli bars now. The, the big thing about peaks is that I would have, and I'm recommending this to my clients, is that when you get to um, uh, 
Angler's Rest, which is about a hundred and something kilometers into the ride after the lunch stop. You might want to have something in your in your bag that's savory. All right, so it could be like a, uh, a Vegemite sandwich. You know, it could be even something like potato chips. Like, you know, you don't have to get too caught up in it being super healthy at that point because you're probably craving a lot of sugar and, sorry, salt and, you know, something a little bit. So it could be even a packet of potato chips, something savory or something a bit different. You know, if you've been eating muesli bars for yeah, the last... They had Vegemite scrolls there last year at yeah. Angles Rest, and I was wondering why they had that. So yeah. maybe that's yeah. the salt component. Or yeah, something salt, salty, savory, you know, because you've been eating a lot of carbs for the last you know, six, seven, eight hours, and it's nice to have something that's not sugary. So certainly have a few options because, I mean, I've been out on training rides and being comfortable eating carbon bars and gels and those sort of things. And then you get to Angler's Rest and it's like, I'm just over it. You know, I just don't want to eat another another muesli bar or a gel. I just like to have something different. So have, but definitely try, you can even have salted peanuts or or almonds or, you, you know, or you can have uh, ginger. Uh, you know, you can buy ginger. Uh, just something different ginger is kind of cool um, it's got a really unique taste if you like ginger but definitely don't do that at the beginning you know don't do that as the first thing first time you eat ginger on a ride so trial it out on your on your training rides to make sure that it agrees with you because the last thing you want is to, to eat anything new and that includes like dinner the night before breakfast in the morning mm. and in ride stuff don't don't introduce anything new uh, leading up to that event. And even in the week leading up to it, I wouldn't eat anything new or exciting or trial out anything, you know.